Hey everyone, it's John and today we're going to be doing some more network automation and in this video we're going to be again looking at Nornia but in the context of using templates. Now if you'd watched my previous video on Jinja 2 template and you kind of get the rough feel of what this video is going to be about, effectively templating allows us to separate out our syntax with the actual data with which we're using. So in the example here, if we imagine, this topology here is actually using all Cisco viral images but we're going to do a little bit of pretending we're going to pretend the top layer devices one two three four are from one vendor and the bottom layer five six seven and eight are from a completely separate vendor now what happens when you use different vendors you have different os's therefore you have different command line syntax that can be a problem when you try to push out uh, automated changes because you're not actually behind the command line manually typing in the configurations as per how that device wants it. So what we're going to do is we're going to have our data held in, effectively structured data held in our host file and we're also going to be using these templates which we can reference to push out, push that data out to the devices in the required syntax that it needs. Now this example is actually going to be using just EIGRP. Now, before you recoil, I know that EIGRP actually is a Cisco proprietary protocol and it almost is um, the opposite of what we're trying to do here, but it actually gives us a good chance to practice this because EIGRP can be configured in two very different ways. The first way is in EIGRP named mode. The second one is EIGRP normal mode. That's the one you're probably more familiar with. So we're going to pretend that EIGRP is an open standard protocol and one vendor implements EIGRP with one type of syntax and the other vendor implements EIGRP with a completely different type of syntax. And we're going to reference data within our host file, push it out with Nornio just so we can have these automated changes. But despite these two different fictional vendors having two different command line syntaxes, we can still push out that changes in a very, very efficient manner. So that's roughly the kind of the plan for this video. It's going to be quite simple and straightforward. And I just really want to highlight how useful um, Ginger 2 templates can be in your network automation. And that'll be it. So we'll just do that quite quickly and then wrap the video. Okay, so here we go. So I think the best way to approach this video is just to quickly delve into the script with which we're going to actually deploy the changes. But first before I do that I'll show you where I sourced it. Well pretty much most of it, I've made slight modifications. Now it's this one here on the official Nornia documentation. Now if we look here we've defined this basic configuration function. I've pretty much copied this. But the main difference here is in the path. Okay the path here they've got is templates and we're referencing a dynamic path using the platform value. Okay. I've actually changed that because in reality, we're not using different platforms. All the devices in my topology are Cisco Viral iOS. I've created my own arbitrary attribute under the data key called um, vendor and it's going to have a different value. Now, let me just show you that so we can maybe better understand what I'm saying. So, if I do a CD and a norm here and they do a vim, Here's the script here, okay? Now, the first part of the script you should be pre uh, pretty familiar with, okay? From Nornier, import, init Nornier, so on and so forth. We then create a variable called nr and initialize Nornier using our config.yaml text file, okay? We then defined a function called basic configuration and effectively, we're going to specify really where the path lies to our Jinja2 template. In this case, the Jinja2 template is called eigrpj2 because it's going to be an EIGRP configuration. Now here is the confusing part perhaps, but the really, really important part. So try to follow along here. The path where we can find the EIGRP J2 actually is a dynamic path. It changes contingent upon the value in the host file per the device, okay? So the path is templates, okay? Forward slash, and here we've got these curly braces and we're actually calling a dictionary key, okay? So what we're doing is we're actually saying, look in the host.yamls file and look for the host's uh, dictionary key vendor and put in the value of that key. That will be the path to find the EIGRP uh, template. So that might be confusing. So let's just look at the actual host file, okay? So if we do a vim hosts, we'll see that for router one, like I say, I've created this dictionary key called vendor. And what we're going to do is return the value of that key. So in the case of router 1, it's vendor x. The case of router 2, again, vendor x 
3 and 4 are the exact same, however, when we get to router 5, we've actually changed it, it's now vendor Y, so that means, if you think about it, for router 4, we're going to be calling the value vendor X, for router 5, we'll call the value vendor Y, that means I'll have two separate paths, so we can actually have two different templates and two different paths, and they'll actually correspond to the different routers, okay? This is effectively what we're going to do. So let's just go back and look at that file again. So the, t the path is going to be templates and whatever value that that router has for the vendor key, whatever value that is, put that as a path. So think about it. In the case of router 1, 2, 3, 4, the path is going to be templates forward slash and whatever the value is. For that those ones, it's going to be vendor x and then the name of the template, which is going to be eigrp.j2. That's routers 1 through 4. However, because router 5 to, to 8, 5, 6, 7, 8, have a different value for that variable, the path is going to be templates.vendor y, because the value for the vendor key is different here, okay? So vendor y, eigrp.j2. And what we're going to do is just put different templates in these paths. Now, what we need to do to make that work, we've actually got to create folders using these names, okay? So let's just look at that. Let's look at the path, okay? So we've got a templates folder here, okay? So we go into that, cd templates, and we do an ls. We've actually got two folders which are actually named exactly after the values in those keys, okay? So if we do cd vendor x, we'll see that we've got a template called eigrp.j2 and if we cap that we'll see that we've got the configuration for eigrp named mode okay we're going to pretend that's the syntax for one vendor however when we go out and go to oh, vendor y and ls we'll see we've also got a j2 template eigrp j2 but if you notice it's actually a different syntax. This one is using um, named mode, router eigrp and a name, then address family IPv4 autonomous system. This one uses the classic way of just router eigrp and followed by a number, okay? So this is the way we're going to simulate it. So if we go back here, just clear you. Okay, so we'll quickly double back and look at the rest of that script before we closely examine the templates, okay? So let's just have a wee quick skim over this. So all we're doing, like I say, we've created this dynamic path to where each router can find its template. We're then going to use this result method to capture the result from this variable r. We're going to save it as config and then effectively we're going to just be using napalm to push out the changes of those devices into the templates and make the configurations on devices. That's pretty much the script. It's pretty simple. So let's go back and just look at the templates. That's really what we're kind of focusing on. So let's look at vendor X's first and the cat EIGRP. We'll see that we've got just ordinary strings, just router EIGRP, but we've also got these uh, double curly braces. These are our variables and they're going to be substituting in the values of the keys within our host file. So for example here, we're going to do router EIGRP and whatever the value is, for the domain key in our host.yaml file, that's what it is. So let's look at that a bit closely then. If we pull that up, create another terminal here, and cd oh, nor near, and all them actually. So you can see here, the domain key for router one, the value is IPv0. Okay, so this is what we're gonna pass in. We're effectively saying, Router eigrp, look up the host file, find the key domain, and pass in the value, which is going to be IPv0. In fact, it's IPv0 for all the devices you can see here for the scroll down. Okay. Now, let's go back. We're then going to type address family IPv4 autonomous system, and then look in the host file, find the ASN key, and put in the value for that. So what's the value for that? Router1, just gg at the top. Router 1's ASN key, the value is 1, 2, 3. In fact, like the others, they're all on the same ASN, 1, 2, 3. So as it iterates over each device, it's going to find the same value, okay? But it could be different if you want it to be, okay? 
So then we're going to pop in that value. We're then going to type network 0000 to advertise all networks. And then we're going to do EIGRP router ID, look in the host uh, YAML file, find the host name key and put in the value. So what is the host name key for router 1? GG. The host name key is 192.168.31.11. But when we get to router 2, it's going to be 31.12, for router 3, 31.13, so on and so forth, you get the drift. So, if we go back out, and we did have a look at vendor Y, the path in vendor Y, which is going to be the path for 5, 6, 7 and 8, they're going to find this template, which looks a little bit different. It's going to be your normal EIGRP, it's going to be the router EIGRP, it's going to look in the host.yamls file, find the ASN key and put in the value. So again, for router 567, again it's all the same value here anyway, but it could be different, it's going to find the value, it's going to look up ASN, find the value 123 and return that. So effectively what it's going to do is pass in router EIGRP123, no auto summary, network all the networks, router EIGR, sorry, EIGRP router ID, host, look up the host name. And again the host name for router 5 is 31.15, for router 6 it will be 31.16, so on and so forth. And that's pretty much how the template is going to work. So like I say, in our example we're pretending that we've got a set of devices which use this type of syntax and we've also got another set of devices down the bottom which is a completely different type of syntax, but you'll notice that independent of the syntax we can have this nice consistent host file right here it doesn't matter our devices because we're just going to be passing in these devices and we'll just call different templates for different CLIs and pass in the correct syntax so the device can be correctly configured with the values which we've set in our host file okay so let's just go back here and just cd ls and clear so you recall that from our script, we just quickly look at it. We're actually going to be using Napalm Configure. Now, here's an important point to know about this. See when we're doing this, we just go up here. Napalm Configure, in this case, we're going to actually have to be using Enable SCP, which is secure copy. Napalm wants this. So this command, IP SCP Server Enable, has to be present on all the devices, all eight devices. However, by Cisco on default, this command is disabled. So we actually need to do is copy and paste this command into all devices. So we could just do that, copy paste it, put it in notepad and do it the old school way via notepad. But because we're trying to do things programmatically, let's just do it with an old normal script. Okay, so let's just try that. So if we look at this script here, see, or rather, vim run book two, edit this. And you can see I've just edited this last script. We're using netmiko send config to reference a config file. This is the name of the text file called secure copy. And then we're going to run a simple show command after it show run a section IP SCP and then we'll return the actual value. So what is actually in secure copy, the text file? You can probably guess. We just can't secure copy. It's just a simple command. So by doing this, we can push out this command to all devices quickly. So let's just go and do that first, okay? So Python 3, run boot 2. And there we go, we've actually pushed out that configuration to all eight devices. We've now enabled IP SCP server on them. Now we can actually run the real script for uh, Napalm, okay? So let's go and do that. So let's run the script then. So Python 3 IPv0. And there we go, that's it finished. So if we scroll up to the top, we should see the first four routers should be configured with EIGRP named mode and the last two should be configured with EIGRP um, normal mode. So there's router 1, we've got router EIGRP IPv0, address family IPv4, autonomous system 123, network all the networks and the router ID is the router's IP address 192.168.31.11. We move down to router 2, again this has got named mode, router EIGRP IPv0, address family IPv4, autonomous system 123, so on and so forth and this continues down for routers 3 and 4. However, when we get to router 5, we should see a different syntax, and this is exactly what we're trying to kind of use with these templates. So router 5 should look a little bit different, and there we go. Router 5 just got the, the kind of basic router EIGRP123, no auto, 
network 000 router ID 31.15 whereas the other ones have got this address family and router EIGRP IPv0. So if you can imagine the first four routers were um, Vendor X, let's say that's Juniper and again that doesn't really make much sense, Juniper with EIGRP but if we imagine that's how they configure something and the bottom four devices had different syntax, you can see that from our host file we had to make no different, with no changes effectively. It was just piped into a template and the template would handle the CLI differences. Our actual data was consistent and that's exactly what we're looking for through the use of templates. So let's just quickly go and check the devices to see that um, the configurations are correct and they're present. So router 1, if we do a do show run section EIGRP, we should have named mode, there we are, that's the syntax for that one. And again, router 3, that's in the top one, that's vendor X, that should also have the same syntax. Yep. But if we go down the bottom and grab, say, number 6, that should have your ordinary EIGRP configuration. There we go. And again, router 7, do show run, and type. <laughs> Section EIGRP again should have normal, and there we are. And like I say, we actually have our EIGRP neighbors up and configured. And like I say, it didn't matter what the vendor was, it didn't matter what the syntax was, our data was consistent, and it was separated from the syntax through the use of templates. And that really is the main function of using templates in particular, Ginger 2. Now, you can actually get more complex templates, you can use loops in them and stuff like that, but we're just trying to keep it simple just at the moment and leave it at that. So, that's pretty much the end of the video. Thanks very much, and I'll see you guys soon. Bye bye.